The world will not be W-O-N until we are O-N-E in Messiah. Is unity really that important? We're going to talk about this question with a rabbi, a pastor, and a priest. And they all walked into a bar. <laughs> because you guys have never heard that before. Yeah, I know. First time. That was the first time that joke's ever been said to these guys. We tried to say we wouldn't say it. We tried not to say it. I, I think I can go. Am I good? I'm all done now? I like the, the priest, the pastor, he, he and the rabbit going. walk into the bar. <laughs> And the rabbit says, I think I'm a typo. Uh, I got a fist bump from Sobel on that one. <laughs> yeah, I was like, we got to rewind that. Come on. Ooh, yes. <laughs> We're like, oh no. We're treading on the, the yeah, classic right? joke. And he's like, I'm going with and even I, another one. I got it. You know? I'll one up you. Why not? I see your bad joke and I raise <laughs> exactly. you one. One of my favorite principles in scripture is unity with distinction. It's this biblical theological term that actually uh, describes the triune God, that he is uni completely unified, but there's diversity. So here we have this on stage and, you know. I'm just gonna say the yeah. phrase one more time, just in case anybody missed it. It's unity with distinction. Right. So maybe, maybe write it down, because it's, so, <laughs> it's so good. How have you seen the chosen bringing unity in your spheres? It's a great question. I, I go back to the Gospel of John where Jesus said, says that uh, my prayer is that you be one as you, Father, and I are one. The, the prayer of God is that we be one and that we find unity. And I think it's where you look for unity. If you look at for unity in what we wear or particular cultural ways of doing things, it's going to be harder to find, but when you find your unity in Christ, that's something to, that's a place where of encounter, that's a place to build, it's a place for dialogue, to speak the truths of the distinction, the distinctive parts of the faith that we represent. And what the Chosen has done is, I find so many people in the Catholic tradition and other, and other people that I encounter in my life, that it gives us a common story to talk about again. It, we're talking about the Chosen, which really we're talking about Christ, the apostles, the early church. Now, I love this because what he's saying is that where we're unified is in the story of the gospel. Right, yeah. That the gospel story is what unifies mm -hmm. us. When it becomes the story, when it becomes central, and mm -hmm. Yeshua is the main character, right, mm -hmm. of the entire story, mm -hmm. then it brings unity. Right. So, And he went straight to John 17, but then he goes in and talks about the story. And then we could all find our place Mm -hmm. in his story, right? In the gospel itself. Yeah. This is the foundation on, upon right. which we all stand. Right. And there's different flavors, but this is this is our right. unifying story. Right. Is him. Yeah. That's the so unifying good. story is not this particular denomination exactly. stream only. Right. right. So I think this is a great point for mm -hmm. how we do come together in unity mm -hmm. is that we have to be, yes, rooted in Yeshua, but everybody claims to be rooted in Yeshua. Right. But you have to, I think, see this gospel story, this yeah. garden to the garden reality mm -hmm. that then we can all find our place and right. where we belong. Right. If we are disciples of Jesus, we are on the same team and the same the same team has the same goal, which is right. let's let's love the world and make disciples and hasten the day of the Lord. There's so many Catholics kind of love the chosen and still every week I'll be outside after mass and somebody will say, Father, have you heard about this this series called The Chosen? I love it. Yeah, I know something about it. Yeah. <laughs> the scene with little James with, with Jesus, you know, touch me. Uh, Matthew. Matthew oh, touches so many way. people, love as it. well as just humanizing Jesus. Um, and that it's it's really created a conversation. And then people are joining in, in group, watch groups with their friends that are, are Catholic, aren't Catholic, aren't anything. So, and so it's a way to help build on a conversation. It's beautiful. When people ask me if I've heard of The Chosen, they say, well, uh, do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a That's a good follow-up yeah. question. <laughs> Uh, there are people He's that don't that like it, to be sure. Um, what? <laughs> We're on the internet. I'm just kidding. We're yeah, right. no, <laughs> uh, I think, you know, the uh, unity with distinction is nothing new. If you think about the 12 apostles that Jesus pulled together, right? 
we have Matthew, the sellout guy to the Romans, and we have Simon the Zealot, the guy who wants to kill all the Romans. And Jesus picks those two guys to be on the same team together. So this unity uh, it, it, with distinction, it, it, it's got a long history in the Christian faith. Yeah. Sometimes some of those favorite distinctions are things we have to loosen up on in order to uh, enjoy the unity that Jesus is calling to. We all come from cultural backgrounds, uh, a wide variety of cultural backgrounds that God has blessed us with, but there's always something sinful in our cultural backgrounds, and we have to be willing to let Jesus speak to that in order to to bring us into tighter unity. Yeah. So the unity with the distinction thing's been going on for about 2,000 years. <laughs> and really even longer than 2,000 right. years because, you know, what I was arguing is that it actually goes back to the triune God. Exactly. Meaning that this is a principle that is just made manifest, you could say, mm -hmm. in the New Covenant Scriptures and through the, the birth of the New Covenant family. Right. But really, this is just about the nature of God himself, right? right? This is the, the Trinity. Mm -hmm. I mean, fully God, fully man, but then Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? right. To me, this is mm -hmm. actually a forever a, yeah, <laughs> reality, a reality yeah. that we just entered into. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, actually, because all of creation mm -hmm. demonstrates unity with distinction. I mean, yeah. the whole creation order. Totally. The earth itself yeah. and the, the universe, I mean, this is all like this. For sure. Plants, animals, mm -hmm. air, oxygen. I mean, yep. it's so all screaming, you could say, mm -hmm. unity with distinction. Yeah. And I also, too, like what he's saying about, hey, you know, check out your, your cultural background and also realize that, you know, there's a cost to, to discipleship. Right. There are things that you have to forsake in order to be a follower of Messiah. Right. And it actually could be things that inhibit unity right right and so yeah. how do we how do we let those things die right. become who we're created to be right. and unify with the family of messiah exactly under his rule and his reign in connection to this is we see the chosen and you see the characters praying the traditional jewish prayers Sorry. and the most famous is shema israel and i you know and i thought you know, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, or alone, you could say. And, you know, this idea of God being echad, God being one, this is so important because, as we said, we Jesus, John 17, Yeshua prays that these and those would be echad, one, as he and the Father are one. And then we read in Zechariah 14, it says, On that day, the Lord will be one and his name will be one. So the question is, if God is one and we declare God is one, then why is God's name only going to be one on that day in the distant future when the kingdom is established on earth as it is in heaven? It's because God's name will not be one, meaning God's name will not be fully revealed and made manifest in the world, the full revelation of who he is and his heart, his character, his nature will not fully be revealed into the world until we become one in Messiah. And this is Jesus, this is Yeshua's praise, is that they might be one, that you might be perfected in unity, and then the world will know the Father sent me. Yes. <laughs> The world will not be W-O-N until we are O-N-E in the side. I love what Rabbi Sobel is saying here because it reminds me that the great rabbinic Jewish rabbi Rashi, mm -hmm. he actually speaks about the Shema from Deuteronomy 6. And he asks this question of, you know, why is the Lord's name used twice? The mm -hmm. holy name of God, yud Hey vav Hey. Yeah. Right, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Right. And what he says is, he actually references that same passage in Zechariah. He says, well, to the Jewish people, uh, the Lord is their God. Mm -hmm. The God of Israel is already the God of the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. But the Shema is actually, uh, actually a declaration saying that one day mm. the nations of the earth mm. will declare that the God of Israel is their king. Wow. And in that day, his name will be one. Come on. Right? When he is king and he'll become king over all 
the earth. Actually, king of the cosmos. Yep. Yep. So we need people from every tribe, tongue, people, and nation mm -hmm. to remain Gentile, yeah. right? Remain the unique chosenness that they are, yes. whatever ethnic mixture and background, to follow the king of Israel. Absolutely. And the Jewish people yep. to follow the king of Israel, who we all know is Yeshua. Mm -hmm. And that's the great unity with distinction that's that awesome. we're talking about. And that ushers in, I can feel it, mm. the return of the king. Come on. I mean, like it's so exciting and yeah. beautiful. And I love that we're getting a tiny taste of it yep. here in this interview. Yes. In my perception, I feel like unity is an undervalued principle yeah. in scripture. Like it's, it's, are we pursuing unity? at the same quest that we are other realities. And to me, this is one of the things I love so much about The Chosen is that it's gathering the family. Yes. And it's it, like you say, it's gathering on the important aspects of who Yeshua is, who Jesus really is. And then the Jewishness of him, in my understanding, it, it creates this like glue that helps unify the family. And like, that's just an amazing picture of, because there've been unity movements throughout the centuries, but for this first time in history, we live in this unique moment in history where the, the Messianic Jewish movement has been rebirthed, right? Israel's come back into her land, and now we have the, the resurrection, if you will, of the Messianic Jewish remnant that now allows the fullness, if you will, of this diverse family. I don't know if, Rabbi Jason, you have a comments about that. But. I think on the one hand, the danger is because of the fallenness of humanity, our first uh, inclination in our reality is to feel otherness and separation. Uh -huh. I feel myself distinct and separate. That's the reality in the physical fallen world but that's not the reality from God's perspective in the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one people, and we are truly all one and truly all connected, preserving the bond of unity you know, and peace in the spirit. It's easy to be a hater and look at the differences instead of the realities that we're far more similar and connected and family than we truly perceive. And I do think the restoration of the Messianic movement into this dialogue is, is so important because God wants to restore the fullness of his, of his plan for humanity. And there's a principle as it was in the beginning, so will it be in the end. So when you look at the, the book of Acts, you have the Jerusalem church, which is the, and you have the Jewish apostles to the Jews and Peter, Right, and then you, and James, and then you have Antioch, which represents mission to the nations. When the, when the Jewish mission and the Gentile mission, Jerusalem and Antioch, are working together, you see a great move of God. I think when you separate Jerusalem and Antioch, when you separate a Jew and Gentile, then you wind up with not the fullness of God's intention. With the lens of, of God that we're actually able to see people how they were designed and created to be. And even if we are very different and diverse, rather than seeing the negatives of the diversity, right. we can see the positives of like, th this is our commonality, this is who we're right. called to be. And yes, you look and you'd act different than I do, but that's not a negative thing right. necessarily, right? And so sin can degrade our ability to see people the way God intended us to see each other. Right. And so. Yeah, I mean, you could see the different denominations or as I like to call them, flavors. Flavors. Uh, you can see it as division. Right. Or you can see it as actually God allowing diversity. Mm. Because, I mean, it's hard for everybody to fit into one mm. yeah. mold, if you one will. One flavor. So, yeah. yeah. Some so, people like chocolate, some people like vanilla, you know. The, <laughs> exactly. But as long as the foundational story is the gospel... Then we can unify. Right. If it's in, if it if it's a divergence from there, then right. things get off. Yeah, because if the foundational story is how your congregation was founded, right, or how your denomination was founded, yeah, 
right? It doesn't it doesn't work. That's it's, not your identity. Your identity is right. in Messiah. Right. And right. his yeah. story, exactly. right? Which is history, right? I mean yeah. this but the entire history, the entire creation story, if you will. The book of Acts actually shows the first church struggling with this issue. Uh, and they had those conversations and had to keep working on it even as we need to keep working on it. Yeah, and, and, a, and a big thing you said, there's, there's been lots of unity movements, and to keep the main things the main things is so important because we're rallying around Jesus. We're rallying around the Messiah. It's like our allegiance is to him. Our, our, all of our eggs are in his basket, right? And if we're rallying around other things, it's not going to work. We're rallying around the gospel of the king, and, and that's even what is giving us the ability to be even right here, right now, is that we're rallying around the gospel of the king that, that is returning. I believe we're in a John 21 moment. We have a new book out, Signed the Secrets of the Messiah. We talk about this. I believe that God wants to bring the greatest catch that the world has ever seen, hence the lone road of the chosen. But I think God doesn't bring the catch until we prepare the container. And the first time Peter cast the nets, his net broke when Jesus told him to cast the net again. John 21, the nets don't break. God wants to give us the nets that don't break. The nets represent the network of relationships in the Lord that God is bringing together for this time of season. What happens though is too many times people think it's my net or my part of the net is most important. <laughs> the only, you have to understand you're only a piece of the net. Yeah. It is when we join our pieces yeah. to each other, that's when the net is formed for what God wants to do. Historically with unity movements and revivals, it starts off great, and then someone says, well, my net should be the most important net. Right. <laughs> and then you break the net. Yeah. Yeah. That, that question is just so important. And I think one of the things that The Chosen shows is that they all found their way to Jesus right away, but they're still learning what Jesus, who Jesus really is and what it really means to follow him. Right. And that's where the discernment comes in to yeah. say, Yes, we all want to be around Jesus. What does that mean? Yes. And that was the whole task of Acts and East is to say, well, what does it mean to follow the Christ yes. in this world, in this place, in this time that we're in? Mm -hmm. And But if we keep that as the core question, we'll do it. You're right. The Chosen has done a great job of showing that, right? which, you know, everybody came to him and then, and wow, they're still doing that. They're still <laughs> wrestling. And, you know, how you kind of relate to different characters right in different ways and I, I love how they have presented again it's just this human journey uh to the lord and then you work out your your salvation with fear and trembling right yeah it's called discipleship right you have to be <laughs> discipled to be yeah. made more like him you have to be discipled in order to be a disciple <laughs> yep i love that statement mm -hmm. and then the word disciple also you can also pronounce it like Discipline. 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 Like, like <laughs> you're going to be disciplined. For sure. And you have to walk mm -hmm. in discipline. Yep. Be disciplined yep. to be a disciple. Right. To be discipled. It's all the same word. That's mm -hmm. really a strange thing it in is. English, isn't it? It is. I love the psalm. I don't remember the reference, um, but it's, let a righteous man strike me. It is a kindness. Mm. Right? And so it's this, this idea of, of discipline and being a disciple and it's like I know I'm going to need corrected there are mm -hmm. times when I like my way isn't always going to be the right way and I needed to be tweaked corrected sometimes hit on the head mm -hmm. so to to get that junk out and again yeah. when we're talking about unity it's like when when I when I want it my way or the highway that's not unity even if it's in the name of Jesus we just want to thank you guys so much for connecting us to this ecumenical Yeshua, this authentic Yeshua. Can we just give them a hand? Thank you so much. Two hands. I feel like a real sappy. I just feel, I, I personally, I just feel a lot of love for these guys. Yeah. Like, just, I just feel like I feel the love of the Father for these men and say thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing with the chosen, but thank you for what you're doing in your ministries and, and discipling the nation. So right. it was a, a great time together. It really was. And even off stage, like mm -hmm. very gracious, kind, mm -hmm. and men that just love God. Yeah. And I it's it's actually so beautiful when you see and you get to know people from different backgrounds and, and what 
their love of God looks like. Yeah. It's like it's actually really inspiring. It is. Like I find it very inspiring. Like yeah. as a catalyst for my own life. We could feel unity on the stage. Like we could yeah. feel love for these people. You know, the love of the Father just flowing mm -hmm. back and forth and. That was like a, the, the reality of what we were talking about yeah. manifesting. Yeah, right we were there. experiencing exactly. unity with distinction yeah. while talking about unity with distinction. Right, right. And it wasn't just the people on the stage, because no. if you think about all the different people, this was chosen con. So yeah. you had people from all over the world, oh, really, yeah. that came and are in this room, mm -hmm. and they're from all different flavors and yeah. backgrounds. And I think it's even happening through our channel, through Grafted, where Amen. people are emailing us from all over, and it's beautiful to see Amen. all the different flavors of the family. Amen. So send us a, a email, yeah, please. A comment in the description below, and tell us you know what flavor you come from. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to hear from you guys. Really if you like our videos, and you should. <laughs> Please make a donation and help us spread a biblical messianic worldview. If you enjoyed this video and you want to watch the whole interview, click here. Did you do it? You know when you're in ministry, you're not afraid of a bad joke here no, and there. And you're you not know? afraid of repeating the bad joke either. <laughs> new I, audience. I said the joke and I laughed at it right. again. And I've heard that joke before and laughed again. You know? It's, it's, it's called fun.